Hello, welcome to the uh, next step of our journey. You see, uh, uh, the first week, which was essentially the warm-up week, uh, we uh, we we introduced the idea of structural analysis. What is structural analysis? And also, we reviewed some of the uh, basic concept of mechanics. Uh, uh, such as the free body diagram, uh, degrees of freedom, then equilibrium equations, and then concept of determinate and indeterminate structures. Right. Now, this week and uh, next few weeks, uh, we'll be discussing various methods to uh, analyze statically determinate structures. Mm, we'll start with truss. Now. If you remember, um, there are two kinds of responses we are interested in. One is uh, internal forces and then deflection. Uh, this week, we will see various methods to determine internal forces in truss, statically determinate truss. And the next week, we will see how to determine a displacement uh, in truss. Okay. So, uh, mm, let us first understand what is truss. Uh, Trusses, you see, truss is a structure composed of slender members connected together at their end points through pins. Uh, slender means the cross section uh, of the cross sectional dimension is very small as compared to the length of these members. Now, uh, for instance, uh, suppose this is this is a truss, right? Now, what it says is the structure is composed of slender members. Now, we have several slender members, these are the members and these members are connected together at their end points. These members are connected together at the end, their, at the end points and how they are connected? Uh, this connection, uh, all this connection should be through pins. So, these are pins. And of course, uh, it has uh, support, it is supported, this truss is supported. Now, in this case, we have three major component, structural component. One is the member itself, which forms the body of the truss and their connection through pins and, and the support. Now, mm, for, uh, for better understanding of the structural arrangement, uh, let me take you to uh, our model lab where I will show you one prototype of truss um, so that you can you can you can uh, you can understand uh, um, uh, you can understand these members and their their connection in a better way. Uh, this is the prototype uh, uh, of a warren truss. You see look at the arrangements of different members in this truss. All these these are the members right all these are the members and these members are connected at the end for instance, this is the connection of this member, this member and this member. Now, first thing is if you see the cross section, this member, the cross section of these members are very small as compared to the length. That is why uh, these members are very slender. Now, uh, all these members are separate. If you even this is called uh, top cord and this is bottom cord, even the top cord if you see this is separate, this is separate, this is separate. Now, you look at the look at look at their joint, you see this plate is called gusset plate. Now, what happens is all the members are uh, they are not directly in general they are not directly connected to the other members they are connected to the gusset plate. So, it is through the gusset plate the force and everything gets transferred to one to uh, one point to yeah, another another point. Now, uh, now you see uh, another important thing uh, 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 just now when we define truss we said that uh, every joints uh, are pin joints, but in actual uh, real life trusses, these joints are not pin joint. Even in, in this case, you can see these joints are not pin joints because uh, you see here that the two two screws uh, are used here. So if had it been one screw, uh, this would have um, behaved like uh, pin joints. But in this case, these are two screw. So this is not actually pin joint. Now even if you uh, see the real truss, those joints are also not uh, pin joints, but it is an idealization that we uh, use. We assume those joints are pin joints. Now, their effect will be very small, uh, the rigidity that pro provided by, uh, by those joints, uh, the effect of that rigidity will be very small and that idealization we can go with. Now, uh, you see this is 
this if I if I just turn it like this. So, you have two such thing one is this and another in this and these two are connected through this basin. Now, this is a space truss, but what we do is we will analyze only the one part only this plane part we will analyze. Okay. So, uh, let us again go back to the classroom and then see um, continue with the discussion uh, uh, on structural analysis of truss. Okay, uh, that's what um, we could uh, demonstrate in a in a in a classroom uh, setup. But next time when you when you go to when you cross a bridge and uh, see a truss, then please look at the truss carefully, see their arrangements, especially the joints. Or next time when you park your bicycle uh, in a cycle stand which is made of truss, uh, then look at the truss. Uh, or um, when you are walking through um, a field and see the transmission tower, you look at those tower and try to understand yourself uh, their structural arrangements. Okay. Now, let us see uh, the analysis of the truss is based on certain assumptions and uh, these assumptions are uh, the first assumption is all the joints interconnecting the members are pin joints. Uh, just now we defined truss that mm, the members are pin joints, but now you remember I, I told you in the model lab as well. Uh, originally, uh, if you look at the different truss structure, those members are not not pin connected. Uh, they the, the, their connection provides some rigidity uh, to the structure, some uh, rotational rigidity to the structure, but this is the idealization, this is assumption that um, we uh, in our in our analysis we assume those connections are pin joints and uh, and the, the whatever rigidity those, those the rigidity that provided by their joints is very small as compared to other factor that is why the, the those um, the, that rigidity can be uh, neglected. Now, the second is the loads are all uh, con concentrated and act exactly on the joints. What does it mean? You see, if this is a truss, then the second uh, idealization is you whatever load you have, that load has to be always on the joints. Okay. So, these are correct load. You cannot have uh, a load like this, which is acting on the member this load cannot be is not possible because uh, because if we if we uh, under such kind of load then the truss member uh, will undergo bending which is not desirable in this case so the um, first assumption is or first idealization is all the members are connected through pins and the second idealization is or second uh, assumption is the the forces that is acting on the truss it is always on the uh, joints Okay. Now, you see let us introduce the concept of two force member. Now, the name itself suggests uh, a member which has two forces. Now, what does it mean? You see this is a truss. Now, if I draw the free body diagram of this truss, then this is the free body diagram. This is hinge support, this is roller support. So, hinge support is uh, represented by two reactions and roller support is one uh, reaction here. Now, you take any member, suppose we take a member B C. Okay. Now, let us draw the free body diagram of the member B C. Now, what are the support, what are the end, end condition of this member B C? The B C end condition is the pin joints. Okay. So, naturally at, at point B and at point C, the characteristic of pin joint is it, 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 it does not allow any, uh, any root, it, it, it does not provide any constraint again rotation. So, therefore, the forces, the, uh, the hinge forces we have is the two, two forces, one in horizontal and vertical direction. So, uh, at B we have this force and at B, B C we have this. So, this is the free body diagram of member B C. Right. Now, let us uh, now suppose R B is the resultant of B X and B Y and similarly R C is the resultant of C X and C Y. It could be anything the value of R C and R B could be anything and in any direction, but suppose these are the resultant. So, this free body diagram now can be represented like this. 
right these are equivalent now you see when i say when we say uh, a structure is in equilibrium then every point of the structure is in equilibrium every member of the structure is in equilibrium right so in this case member bc is in equilibrium now what is the equilibrium condition equilibrium condition is that the net forces acting on the on the net force acting on the body or net mode moment acting on the body is uh, zero right there is no unbalanced uh, forces or unbalanced moments now you see if it has to satisfy equilibrium condition the member bc then the first condition should be rb is equal to minus rc so rb and rc they should be equal and opposite opposite direction so that they they can cancel each other and the so this will ensure that summation of forces is equal to zero now summation of uh, whatever if we if whatever force system you have they should not provide any unbalanced couple in the system right now this can be only assured uh, only ensured when rb and rc their line of action is same and that line of action is along the member bc right so this rb and rb rb and rc should be like this then only the equilibrium of bc will be satisfied right so in this case you see there there is no net couple the couple produced by these two forces is zero and they are equal and opposite so net force is also zero so this is the free body diagram of member bc now what it says or another 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 possibility would be in this case okay means in this case the member bc is under tension and in this case member bc is under compression now what it says it says that if we take and this is true for any member in the truss right so it says that if we take any member from the truss then their free body diagram will be this they are subjected to those members are subjected to uh, an axial force it could be tension or it could be compression so this kind of member is called two force members because in this in this member two forces are acting at the two end of this of this body right so in truss all the members are two force members now and and all the mem two force member and that's why in in truss all the members are subjected to axial load either compression or tension now if you recall when we discussed uh, when we discussed um, internal forces in beam then beam is the internal forces in beams um, are uh, bending moment and shear force we did not consider axial force in beam now in truss there is no bending moment there is no shear force only forces that each member uh, in the truss is subjected to is the axial force right now another important assumption is uh, because of this axial force uh, this member itself does not uh, undergo any deformation there is no axial deformation in the member right now uh, now you see let us the free body diagram of bc we have just now discussed this is the free body diagram of bc similarly if i have to draw the free body diagram of other members let us say member ab so free body diagram of member will be this now this force this is the standard representation of force in bc uh, fbc fbc means this is the force in member bc okay uh, similarly when we write fba it means is the force in member ba you can write fab or fba but whatever notation we use be consistent with that now um, similarly we can have uh, the free body diagram of uh, member bd now you see member bc ba and bd they these three members are connected at b okay now if i have to draw the free body diagram of this pin free body diagram of this joint then what would be the free body diagram let us this is the joint b now uh, this this point will get force from bd and which is fbd and what will be the direction of this force in this case it is in this direction so when we draw the free body diagram of b the force has to be 
um, shown in this direction. Similarly, this from B C uh, there will be there will be a reaction there will be there will be a force from B C and this B C will be the opposite direction that we have um, shown opposite to the direction that we shown in B C. And similarly, if we the force from member B A to this joint will be F B A. Now, when you connect them, when these three members are connected with this joint, then this force will balance this, this force will balance this and this force will balance this and the entire joint will be in equilibrium. right? Now, this is the free body diagram of the whole structure and then these are the free body diagrams of member uh, and this is the free body diagram of joint B. Okay? Now, another important point here to notice uh, our sign convention. We assume that the member if it is subjected to um, tension then it is positive and compression is negative. That is the reason why in all the members uh, the forces are shown as if uh, the members are subjected members are in tension. Okay. Now, so this is how we can draw the free body diagram of each member separately and free body diagram of joints. Now, in, a, in this truss we can have se we have several joints similarly free body diagram of all the joints can be obtained like this. This is the free body diagram of joint B. Similarly, free body diagram of joint A if I have to draw then what are the what are the forces at joint A reaction force A x and A y then member force from A b and member force from A c. So, this is the free body diagram of A, A x A y and member force from A c and members force from A b. If we draw the free body diagram of joint C then this C is um, we have member force from A c, members force from C e and member force from B c and member force from C d. So, this will be the free body diagram of joint C. Similarly, free body diagram of joint E is reactions E y and two member forces member force E d and member force C. This is the member force. Now, if we now uh, okay. So, these are the member forces, uh, these are the free body diagram of different joints. right? Now, you see uh, uh, this F B, this force and this when these when they are connected through member these joints and these joints member A B, then B A and B this force and this force will balance uh, will cancel each other and this will this will be in equilibrium. Okay. Now, this is how we can draw the bending um, um, free body diagram of uh, different joints. Okay. Now, uh, once we know the free body diagram, let us see, um, uh, let us write the equilibrium equation uh, on those um, free body diagrams. Okay. Now, uh, what is the equili equilibrium equations we can have here? One equilibrium equation is this is the free body diagram of joint B. Now, if I have to joint B is in equilibrium, so what is the conditions for um, um, condition that joint B should satisfy the force system must satisfy um, one is summation of forces in x direction is equal to 0 and summation of forces in y direction is equal to 0. You see uh, summation of moment at summation of moment at B is anyway 0 because all the forces are um, all the forces are passing through point B. So, summation of moment irrespective of the value of the, these forces summation of moment is always 0. So, if we take summation of moment is equal to 0 it do not give you any additional information. right? So, uh, um, say independent information we can get only from these two equations summation of f x is equal to 0 summation of f y is equal to 0. Now, uh, therefore, every joints will give will give us two equations. Okay. Now, if if there are in the, the there are j number of joints in in a truss, the number of equilibrium equations we can have two into j, two equations per joint. Okay. Now, so if I have to if I have to analyze this truss, uh, now number of equations available, uh, the number of equilibrium equations available is two into j. Now, let's see. Uh, now, in order to 
uh, in order to uh, in order to be able to solve the problem able to determine all the all the all the unknown uh, the number of unknown should be uh, less than uh, number of equations and here number of equations are 2j so all the unknown total number of unknown uh, in the trust must be uh, less than uh, 2j right less number of unknown must be equal to 2j right Okay, before we before we before I give you more uh, before we discuss more on on this aspect, the number of uh, their relation, number of unknown and number of equation. Let us let us quickly see some um, concept of stability and static determinacy in truss. You take as suppose this is a truss. Okay, now it, it has two members. Now this is not a uh, stable configuration. Um, you see now the this is hinge support and this is uh, roller support so number of constant external uh, reaction support reactions are 3 but in spite of that this truss is not uh, stable because when it is subjected to a vertical load at point at at this point then it undergoes um, it 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 it, it uh, experiences a mechanism like this. Okay. So, this is not a stable configuration. Now, let us see how we can make this stable. One by intuition we can say that if we if we replace this roller support by a hinge support then this structure may become stable because it is the roller support which is allowing this allowing this point to move in this direction. But if this roller if we provide a constraint uh, in this direction, then this point will not move and therefore, the, the configuration will be stable. So, one thing we can do is we can this is an unstable configuration right. Now, one thing we can do is we can replace this roller support by a hinge support and this becomes stable. Okay. Now, how many constraint we have given here? Um, constraints are here 2 constraint and here 2 constraint. Okay. 4 constraints are given. Now, is there any other way uh, through which we can make this uh, make this truss stable? Yes, there is. Uh, still, we can use roller support here, but then you then if we join this point and this point through a member, then this becomes stable because uh, when in absence of this member, this point this point uh, th this point was uh, was free to move in this direction. But now, in, even if it is roller support, this will not move in this direction because the the, this member will oppose that motion. So, this is a stable configuration right. Another thing we can, so this is stable configuration. Now, another thing we can do is uh, instead of roller support again both uh, uh, we provide both, we provide uh, a member between these two points and also the roller support is replaced by um, a hinge support. So, this structure now what happens in both the this case this case and this case this structure is the both these two configuration is determinate configuration and this configuration is indeterminate configuration now why i am saying that this configuration is determinate and this configuration is indeterminate configuration okay now what is determinate go back to the definition of determinate structure the number of equations available or the number of information available uh, that is equal to the number of uh, number of unknown to be determined then the structure is determinate and indeterminate is when the number of unknowns are more uh, than the number of equations available now let us see what are the number of unknowns we have in this structure now in this case we need to determine support reactions so here two support reactions here two support reactions so total four support reactions is there any un other unknown yes we need to determine the forces in these members also right now we need to determine force in this member we need to determine force in this member so these are also unknown so total number of unknown is 2 plus 4 total number of unknown is 6 unknown now you let us see here how many unknowns we have, we have 2 reactions and 1 reaction here total 3 reactions and then 3 members means uh, total number of unknowns are 6 here. Now, how many equations we have, 
just now we discussed that every joints will give us two equation and the total number of equations will be the uh, will be 2 into number of joints here number of joints are 3 so total number of equations are 6 in this case also number of joints say 3 total number of equations are 6 so therefore here in both these configurations your number of unknowns are 6 and number of unknown are a number of equations available are 6. So, these structures, these two configurations are determinate configuration. Now, let us see the third one. Third one is you have two, we have two reactions here and then again two reactions here, total four reactions and then three um, member forces, total seven unknown, but number of equations available is 2 into j. Therefore, this structure is indeterminate structure, right. Now, so number of unknown suppose the number of unknown support reaction is R and then number of unknown member forces are M means in a structure uh, you have M members and if you then total number of unknown becomes M plus R, uh, R is the support reactions and uh, M is the, number, is the member forces. And how many equations we have? We have total number of equilibrium equations uh, 2J, J is the number of joints. Then depending on their values m plus r is the total number of unknown and the equation 2j we can have three situation ok. One is m plus r is less than 2j and then m plus m plus r is, is equal to 2j and m plus r is greater than uh, 2j. In the first case is unstable you know, uh, because you do not have we do not have sufficient constraint to um, to to make the structure stable and in the second case structure is stable and also statically determinate structure ok. Now, in the third case where the number of unknown are more than number of uh, number of equations then the structure is stable, but statically indeterminate structure. You see the, the indeterminacy that we are discussing here is static indeterminacy. There is another, ki another kind of indeterminacy called kinematic indeterminacy uh, that will be discussed later ok. But you see this the when we say that this is uh, this is statically determinate and this is statically indeterminate just based on these conditions uh, there are counter examples which shows that though these conditions are satisfied but the structure behaves uh, in a different way so these conditions are necessary condition but not this con these conditions are not sufficient to make any comment on the stability of the um, structure just to give you uh, some example you see uh, take one example this now in this in this example uh, total number of uh, member uh, number of member is 9. Now, support reactions here 2, here 1. So, total support reactions are 3. Uh, so, M plus R becomes 12 and uh, number of joints are 6. Um, this is not a joint, this, this, this is one member and this is another member. These two members are not connected here. So, number of joint is 6. So, M plus R is equal to 2J. So, this structure is should be as per our previous um, um, statement um, uh, that uh, m plus r is equal to 2j this structure should be determinate and also stable. But you see if it is subject if I apply a vertical load like this then this may undergo mechanism like this ok. So, this is not a this is not a uh, stable configuration even though um, it is it's, 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 uh, satisfy the condition that m plus r is equal to 2j. So, in this case m plus r is equal to 2j, but still the structure is unstable. Let us see um, one more example, this example um, uh, here number of uh, members are 14 and number of reactions are 3. So, total 14 plus 3 number of unknown are 17 and number of joints are 8. Uh, when we say number of joints that also include uh, the joints where you have supports ok. So, number of joints are 8. So, number of equations available is um, number of equations available is 16 and number of unknown are 17. So, m plus r greater than 2j. The structure is indeterminate, but the structure needs has to be stable as per uh, this relation right. But if it is subjected to a vertical load like this you see it undergoes mechanism like this. So, this is again an example where uh, 
the condition m plus r greater than 2j is satisfied, but structure is not on structure is not stable, it is unstable. So, the uh, the point is here uh, I I mentioned that in, in earlier classes as well do not blindly use any equations or do not blindly use any condition. Uh, apply your engineering sense uh, and by intuition we need to we need to we need to judge whether the structure uh, any configuration of the truss um, can be stable or not. Okay. So, um, now uh, these are different uh, some common types of trusses, some commonly used, but there are many trusses. If you see any books, you will get many more uh, different kinds. Okay. Now, just to summarize this, uh, you see uh, this week, uh, um, this week and next week uh, will will be we are we will be discussing uh, analysis of statically determinate truss. This week we will see how to determine the member forces. Uh, um, the member forces and then uh, the next week we will see uh, week 3 the how to determine joint displacements. Okay. So, uh, there are two methods we will be studying uh, to determine member forces method of joints and method of uh, method of sections. Okay. Uh, now, um, uh, oh, we will stop here next class uh, we will see how to determine the member forces in a statically in determ statically determinate truss using method of joints thank you